in the air too. And in foods, it's important to read labels. And there are probably more than 30,000, maybe 300,000 chemicals in foods. And most of them have not been tested for toxicity. In fact, recent research shows that things we find commonly in food, like monosodium glutamate, nitrates, nitrites, even aspartame, are responsible for causing some pretty serious health effects right now. And um, in the area of water, we're supposed to drink one half our body weight in ounces of water. In other words, if you weigh 100 pounds, drink 50 ounces of water uh, per day. But it needs to be pure water because there's so many chemicals in water today that to have good health, you have to have the water, but it needs to be good water. And as far as air, there's not a lot you can do to control the air you breathe, but inside your homes you can by using household products that aren't full of chemicals and toxins, and there are ways that you can cut down on that too. And then um, the third rule in that area is to make sure that we do get the proper, uh, get nutrition in proper amount. Can taking supplements, uh, vitamin supplements, uh, in reduce the incidence of illness in the human body? It sure can. In fact, the USDA published a study that said if every single person in the United States would just make sure they get the recommended daily allowance, now called the daily values of essential nutrients, we, would, we could uh, change our health picture and reduce heart disease by 25 percent, uh, 50 percent fewer infant, infant and uh, maternal deaths, 50% uh, reduction in arthritis, 50% uh, uh, avoided or improved cases of diabetes, a 75% reduction in osteoporosis, an 80% reduction in obesity, just to name a few. And again, this is from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And it's an old report. I would guess if they did that study again, that they would have a significant reduction in cancer and, and some of the other diseases that are plaguing our nation today. What do we need to do to get 100% of the recommended daily value or the recommended daily allowance? What, what do we need to do? According to the food pyramid, the current food pyramid, you'd have to eat 6 to 11 pieces of um, ser servings of bread, cereal, rice, pasta, and of course whole grain because white flour really doesn't have very much nutrition in it. Three to five servings of vegetables, uh, two to four servings of fruit, two to three servings of milk, dairy, yogurt, cheese, things like that, and two to three servings of meat, poultry, fish, dry beans, eggs, or nutrition. Um, I mean, eggs or nuts. I don't know very many people who do that, do you? No, I have to eat all day long. <laughs> That's right. Are there certain particular supplements uh, we should be taking to make sure we're getting what our body needs? First of all would be a multivitamin. That just It's like buying insurance on your body that no matter what you eat today, you're going to get all the major nutrients and the micronutrients that your body has to have. It's balancing body chemistry, basically. Um, and I'm not doing these in any order because I'm not sure there is an order, but fiber is important too. We need 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. Most Americans get 7 to 10. And do you know colon cancer, the number one cancer killer is 100% preventable if Americans would just get 25 to 30 uh, grams of fiber in their diet a day. And that's not easy to do without supplementation. In fact, I think it's impossible. Calcium is another one that, the, that even the AMA says is critical today because we're facing an epidemic of osteoporosis, which is nothing more than a lifelong calcium deficiency. And calcium is really, really hard to pull from our foods. We really don't assimilate very much of the calcium that's in food today. Uh, B vitamins are critical, and we suggest a B complex. Folic acid has been studied recently to prevent birth defects, but in every woman of childbearing age should be taking it before they conceive because it's at the time of conception that it's necessary. And also B vitamins prevent a buildup of something called homocysteine in the cells. And this buildup causes cellular damage which can lead to heart disease and a myriad of other degenerative diseases and B vitamins keep that from happening. Um, also, all Americans should be taking antioxidants. That's vitamin C, E, and beta carotene to prevent free radical damage in the body. And these vitamins, you know, in small amounts, in the regular RDAs or daily values, they prevent vitamin deficiency diseases like scurvy or rickets. But in greater amounts, and sometimes 10 to 100 times greater than the RDA, they act as protectors in the body and therefore reducing the risk of cancer, heart disease, the ravages of aging, and um, even premature death. Uh, protein, especially soy protein, is uh, 
a nutrient that's had a lot of research lately concerning the phytochemicals that have been discovered uh, in that product. And the, if, you, if you get a good soy product that contains active phytochemicals and isoflavones, then it does help prevent certain types of cancer, um, including breast cancer and colon cancer and prostate cancer. It uh, automatically lowers cholesterol about 20% just naturally. It reduces menopausal symptoms. In fact, in Japan, where their diet is primary, where they get about 95 grams of soy a day in their diet, there's not even a word for hot flash in the Japanese language. Um, they, people who take soy uh, or who have an adequate amount of soy in their diet have stronger bones and better kidney function. And a side benefit is that it stabilizes blood sugar and you have more energy. You just feel better when you're taking it. And I, I do want to say real quickly, too, that it's important to note that all food supplements are not created equal. And in the area of a soy protein, it must be water washed, not alcohol washed, or the isoflavones are, are destroyed in processing. So it is important. And in the area of vitamins, too, the same criteria that we placed on food, natural, alive, and whole should be placed on the vitamin. It needs to be, in my opinion, a natural, whole, live, and that means not heat processed supplement. What about over-the-counter drugs? Many people take drugs. Is there a, a vitamin or a supplement they could take instead for certain problems or symptoms? There are some natural alternatives to medicine cabinet drugs that most people keep in their medicine cabinet. These are herbal remedies. Herbs are different than vitamins. Vitamins feed and nourish the body. Herbs really act medicinally, and there are a number of them that are safe. Some of them aren't safe, but the ones that I'm going to mention uh, have been proven throughout centuries. In fact, in other countries are used generally in preference to drug treatment. Things like garlic. Garlic is a natural antibiotic and will act not only against bacteria but against the virus and it'll bring down fever, lower blood pressure, protect against cancer. In fact, it's the number one food that is being studied by cancer researchers right now, now that they're through with beta carotene and vitamin A. And um, another one would be echinacea. Echinacea is an herb that boosts the immune system and could be used for cold and flu symptoms. Um, it activates the white blood cells and it uh, increases resistance to infection. It really, really makes a difference when someone is getting, you know, coming down with a cold or something. You start taking echinacea immediately and very often you can avert that, um, that illness. Um, Stomach problems, you know, rather than Tums for the tummy, something like peppermint ginger. Peppermint ginger does a great job with nausea or bloating or any, any type of digestive disorder. Um, valerian in place of sleeping pills. Valerian is an herb that has been proven to not only help you go to sleep faster, but uh, help you stay asleep and sleep deeper. In fact, you can sleep a shorter period of time and wake up feeling like you've slept double the amount of hours. It's great. Uh, ginkgo biloba for memory loss. Um, ginkgo, you know, when we get older, we say, well, I just can't think the way I used to. And it's true. We probably can't because we're not getting the same oxygen supply to, to brain cells. And what ginkgo biloba does is help increase the circulation to the brain, and thereby you do think better and your memory functions better. And a side benefit is that it also helps prevent the risk of uh, stroke. Um, ginseng boosts energy, and it's a stress adaptogen, and that's another area where it's important to know what you're getting because there are probably 30 different kinds of ginseng, but only two of them really make a difference. And ginseng, sometimes you'll see it listed as a fad herb, but that's probably because they haven't gotten hold of the right kind of ginseng because it really does make a difference. It stimulates the nervous system too. So um, if you're tired and you need a boost, ginseng's the thing to head for. Glucosamine is another one that's been well studied and well researched and it definitely rebuilds joint cartilage. Great product for someone who suffers from joint pain. And not even someone who has arthritis, just someone who runs on a daily basis or who has um, joint pain in the legs or knees or back or, or whatever. Glucosamine really helps. Um, depression is a real problem in our country today. In fact, I think it's one of the number one drugs is Prozac. And there is an alternative that's natural that has no side effects and completely safe, and it's called St. John's Wort. And it really, it really works. Um, prostate problems, saw palmetto works better than any prostate drug on the market, and better even than surgery to reduce the symptoms associated with that. Um, 
women who have PMS, there's a supplement called, an herb called gamma-linolenic acid, which is, um, we call it GLA for short, and it uh, definitely reduces premenstrual symptoms. It's an anti-inflammatory, and it works, um, rather than taking an anti-inflammatory, uh, it's an omega-3 fatty acid, as is EPA, and both of them really do a good job in that area. So those are just a few of the things that you can use in place of the more commonly used medicine cabinet drugs that we seem to head for. What about over-the-counter drugs? Many people take drugs. Is there a, a vitamin or a supplement they could take instead for certain problems or symptoms? You know, everybody's different, and we're all as different nutritionally as our fingerprints. And nutrients, really, sometimes we think that, um, you know, we, we have a headache, we take an aspirin, we have a stomach ache, we take Tums, but nutrients don't work that way. They work together like an orchestra rather than a solo. So it does seem that we do have to take more than than just one thing. That's why I recommend a multivitamin, multimineral. That gives you a good basis. And that, along with a good protein product to make sure, especially soy, generally will give you the average person who's in good health. That's probably enough, as long as the multi contains an adequate amount of B vitamins and calcium and the antioxidants. What does your body tell you if you're low in the B vitamins? And there are quite a few different B vitamins, uh, maybe 30 or so. Uh, what are the symptoms that you're low in the B vitamins? Chapped lips is probably a quick, I mean, lots of people have chapped lips and never think about it being a vitamin deficiency, but it is. But things like dizziness or uh, fatigue, uh, irritability, depression, um, um, oh, craving sweets can be a B vitamin deficiency. Skin problems, dry, rough skin can be a B vitamin deficiency. Muscle cramps, by the way, can be B vitamin deficiency too. So, I mean, it is hard to kind of pinpoint what it is. Heart palpitations, mood swings can be a B vitamin deficiency because B is a stress vitamin and it also is an energy vitamin. B is required to produce energy from foods. So, any any problem in the area of fatigue, you'd look for B also. All right, and what are the deficiency signs of a person who's low in vitamin C? If you bruise easily, you, you have a vitamin C deficiency. Um, an eye problem could be a C deficiency. Bleeding gums or nosebleeds could be a C deficiency. What one thing would you say is the most important um, in order to be healthy? I think the most important thing to remember is that your health is your responsibility, it's not your doctor's. And so many people today depend on their doctor to tell them what to do. And doctors really aren't trained in preventing disease. They're trained to cure it. And yes, when you get sick, go to your doctor. But try to do something on your own to, to you can make a difference in the way you feel today and you can make a difference in your health by what you do today, even 20 years from now. And I won't quote this exactly because I don't remember the exact quote and couldn't find it when I came. But Dr. Linus Pauling, who's won the Nobel Prize twice, said that you can increase your life expectancy by an average of even up to 24 years by making some changes essentially nutritional. And um, even older people can make a difference in not just life expectancy, but the quality of life by eating correctly, by managing stress, by exercising, drinking plenty of water and getting adequate rest, and taking food supplements. I understand there's a new product that helps reduce wrinkles. The picture you showed me was incredible of the uh, wrinkle reduction on one side of a man's face after using this for seven weeks. Uh, tell us about that, please. Growing out of Shackley's research on antioxidant vitamins, we learned that the skin does not receive any of the antioxidant vitamins that are taken orally. So we put together a team of cosmetic researchers to find a way to hold antioxidant vitamins together stable in a cream where when you put them on your face, they actually deliver the nutrients to your skin cells, thus the name Infucel, because it actually infuses seven antioxidant nutrients into the skin cells. And the pro